of us know that spoilage is a part of the reality of perishable food production. Whether it's tomatoes or bread you're producing, there's usually only a certain amount of time we can expect the product to last before it no longer can, or at least shouldn't, be consumed. Spoilage from the baking side of things is usually a direct result of the action of mold spores and wild yeast that can travel with ease and can be found even in the cleanest bakery or kitchen environments. These spores can and do travel in the air we breathe, so instead of thinking we can eliminate contamination, the best we can do really is to attempt to control it. Spoilage can occur as a result of other factors such as environmental, enzymatic, and elemental effects on food products. However, in this video we'll discuss common preservatives used in baking uh, items and ingredients. Microbiological contamination, with the exception of spore-forming bacteria, mostly occurs after the baking process. For this reason, preservatives are used in the baking formulations to ensure microbes are controlled and do not grow during the shelf life of the product. These ingredients provide safety by controlling possible pathogens, ensuring quality by preventing the growth of spoilage organisms. These can be synthetic, chemical, or natural extracts. Propionates are among the most common antimicrobial used in bakery products. They are considered more natural since propionic acid occurs naturally in some fruits, grains, and cheese. Propionates work well against bread molds and the spore-forming bacteria that causes that ropey bread condition. Most bakers are familiar with this condition. It can contaminate the whole bakery where the breadcrumb loses its structure and has a characteristic pinkish uh, color and uh, smells like melons, rotten melons. In efforts of not being too repetitious, I would recommend that you check out my video on mold inhibitors, where we look at most of the mainstream mold inhibitors used by bakers. And although all of these are derived from completely natural sources, I've included a few additional items that kind of roll off the tongue with a little bit more of an au natural feel. In continuing with this video, I just want to cover off some of the preservatives that may not just be included in their finished bakery item, but is potentially used to add shelf life to the ingredients you may be using. Another common preservative used in a broad range of food and beverage products is sodium benzoate, often also referred to as benzoate of soda. It is not the same as baking soda, so just keep that in mind. Sodium benzoate is industrial manufactured into a crystalline odorless white powder made by combining benzoic acid with sodium hydroxide. Sodium benzoate does not occur naturally, but benzoic acid is found in many plants including cinnamon, cloves, tomatoes, various fruits and berries such as cranberry, and additionally benzoic acid is created by certain bacteria during the production of some fermented dairy products such as yogurt. Although this preservative is not usually found in bread, uh, this ingredient is commonly used for um, its antimicrobial and mold inhibiting effectiveness in cakes, pies, and a broad assortment of store-bought fruit and dairy toppings or fillings. As with most preservatives, this product is usually added to bakery items at a, at a rate of around 0.1 to 0.2% based on flour. In continuing our understanding of preservatives, I want to quickly cover off antioxidants. They can be found in many food products and ingredients we, as bakers, may incorporate into our home-baked goods without really thinking too much about it. Synthetic oxidants, such as butylated hydroxyanisole, generally last longer than natural antioxidants and can still be found being used to extend shelf life in various vegetable oils, some shortenings, margarine, as well as butter to prevent oxidative rancidity. Further, it can be found still being used in meats, cereals, chewing gum, and various baked goods, snack foods, and even beer in some parts of the world. Now, although most chemical preservatives are now considered to be Without potential adverse effects, BHA and BHT are seemingly being phased out due to emerging health and safety concerns. Home bakers have been shying away from synthetics and scary sound and additive names for years, in general opting for alternative naturals like essential oils. 
such as aniseed, calms, camphor, cedar wood, cinnamon, eucalyptus, geranium, lavender, lemon, lemongrass, lime, mint, nutmeg, rosemary, basil. It goes on and on. Traditionally, uh, these are being used by people in different parts of the world. And these vegetable oils have been discovered to possess antibacterial and antifungal benefits and as a result are suitable for natural food preservatives. Now, don't get too excited. Yes, they do provide some natural preservative benefits. However, they can be expensive. They can be difficult to source. They can just be inappropriate for the type of product that you're producing, like the flavor that goes off with it. And of course, how well they work compared to, say, propionates, as an example, is really the reason why they haven't hit mainstream. The good news is that food science and research facilities from around the world have been investigating new and completely natural antioxidants to replace the synthetics currently dominating much of the food industry. Products like uh, the aforementioned BHA, which has been used since the mid to late 40s, is being phased out for more natural products that do the same job of preventing rancidity in edible oils and fat-containing foods. Some of the natural antioxidants, such as alpha uh, tocopherol, uh, beta carotene, and ascorbic acid, have already made their way into the bakery products. However, although these natural antioxidants are found to be effective in enhancing the shelf life of bakery products, they still do not stack up to the performance of synthetic antioxidants. There's a lot of research going into the tocopherol and other organic compounds, so let's just stay tuned. I'm sure something's going to pop soon. And lastly, I just wanted to tell everybody out there, please don't think that I'm trying to push the use of preservatives for your baking. Preservatives have a, have a place in baking, depending on what the expectations and what the needs are for you as the home baker. But generally, you don't need any of these things. This is all for information purposes only, and I hope that everybody got something out of this. So, thank you. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, please give me a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out as I'm getting this channel going here. And be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have sitting right over here. Uh, we'll see you next time. No BS breaking.